Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to the beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, you'll be learning about switch statements. The switch statement is much like the if statement in that it allows you to create branching code. Whereas if statements branch on a condition, switch statements branch on values. These values can be ints, strings, bools, and enumerations, which you'll learn later in this series. Switch statements will not work with floating point types, like floats or doubles. To use a switch statement, simply use the keyword switch, followed by the expression that will be evaluated. The expression must fit between parentheses after the switch keyword followed by braces. At this point, you provide a series of cases. Here, you use the case keyword followed by the value that you are switching on. You cannot provide expressions. All your cases must be unchanging values, otherwise known as constants. After the value, you provide a colon and then the code you want to run for the case. Once you have finished the code, you must break the switch statement. This allows the code flow to exit it. A switch statement can contain as many cases as you need. It also can contain a default case, which works like an else statement. If any of the previous cases aren't matched, then the code flow will jump to the default case. In some languages that provide a switch statement, there is a concept of a fall through. That is, once the code reaches the end of the case, the code flow continues throughout the rest of the cases until a break statement is reached. This is not the case with C Sharp. In C Sharp, you must break the case or there will be a compile error. If you want to run another case, you can use the keywords go to case followed by the case label. C Sharp does allow you to share cases like other languages. Simply put a case label over another label and both cases will work together. No break statement is required. Let's see it in action. To get started writing switch statements, I'm going to open up my control flow folder here inside my project browser tab. Then I'm going to click this create button and select C sharp, C -sharp script. I'm going to call this switch demo. And we're going to double click to open this up in Visual Studio. Like always, I'm going to put all my code within on disable. And the reason for that, in case you've forgotten, is that we can actually call the code on demand. By disabling the cube with a mouse click, we can then run our code, as opposed to putting it within, say, start, and then switching back to Unity and running our game, and then having our code immediately run. So we'll do void on disable. Now first I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to switch on. In this case, I'm going to call this greeting. And greeting is just simply going to say hello. At this point now, I'm going to do the actual switch. So I use the keyword switch and within parentheses, I provide my variable, which is greeting. And now I provide an open brace. And as you can see, we have a closing brace as well. First, I'm going to create a new case. We'll say this was the hello case hello, and then a colon after that. Now I'll just print out a simple statement. Now you can see here we got a little error coming in here and you can see control cannot fall out of switch from case label. So what we have to do is put a break statement. That's all, that's, that's all that it's telling us. Now that we have the hello case, let's add a goodbye case. And this will work the same as the hello case. And again, we have to break this. Now, if I want to create a high case, I can simply put a case high like so. And we'll simply put the colon after that. And as you can see, if this is high, then it will just run. The code flow will go right into the hello case. There's no break necessary. Now that we have both a hello and goodbye, there may be another greeting that we're not thinking about. So to account for that, we'll just put a default case. We'll just put another greeting. 
And like always, even though that this is the last case, we still have to put a break statement. Back in Unity, I'm going to remove our current script, which is scope on the cube. And we'll add the switch demo. And you can see when we run the game, we'll disable the cube. And we get the UR arriving statement. Now let's create a case for both greetings. Hello and goodbye. And we'll just call this both. So we want the code for both goodbye and hello to run. So under here, we're going to put a go to case statement like here, and we're going to say go to hello. Here's an interesting thing. If I put this in capitals, if I put go to with a capital H, you can see down here we get this error. No such label case hello within the scope. What Visual Studio is doing is checking our cases and make sure, making sure that there's a valid case so that we don't send the code flow into an invalid case, which of course would cause an error. So here we have in hello, so the case is going to jump to hello. It's going to say you are arriving. Now we want to jump to goodbye. And we do this with an if statement. We can just do if greeting equals both, like so. And we will say if th that is the case, we'll say go to case goodbye, just like that. And now it's going to jump down to greeting and say you are leaving. Let's switch this to both. Now I'm going to jump back to Unity. And when we play our game, we switch to our console. Now I'm going to disable the cube. And you can see it says you are arriving and you are leaving. When writing your games, chances are you'll be putting all your logic between if statements. In certain cases, using switches can be faster than if statements but such tiny performance increases should be thought secondary to the readability and organization of your code. That's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to end with a challenge. Your challenge is to create a switch script. Provide a public variable called player count. The valid player count should be one to two players. Attach this script to the cube. When the cube is disabled, print out Hello player one for one player, hello players for two players, and please enter one or two players for everything else. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. In your challenge, I gave you the task of creating a switch script and to switch on a variable called player count. Let's do this now. Here we have Unity open and I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to select C sharp script and we'll just call this switch like so. Now I'm going to create a public variable. and This public variable is called player count. And this is a type of int. Now within on disable, what we're going to do is switch on this player count. To do this, we type switch and then we type put it in player count like so. And now I start making my cases. So for case one, we're simply going to print out the message, hello, player one. For case two, we're just simply going to write out hello players. And finally, for the default case, we will simply print out, please put, please enter one or two players. And like before, we have to put our break statement there. Now we're going to save this and switch back to Unity. Here back in Unity, I'm going to select my cube and I'm going to remove the switch demo script. And we're going to add the switch script. Now we'll play the game. I'm going to open up my console here and you can see we have our player account. So let's put two and then disable the cube. And here you can see it says hello players. If I put one and we enable, then disable the cube, we have hello player one. And of course, if we put say one, 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 and we enable, we disable, we have please enter one or two players.